Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You notice I'm smiling? Get yourself ready. Darkness comes in many, many forms. On our last Shabbat that we were together, we spoke of the first seven plagues that were thrust upon Pharaoh and the hardening of his heart. Last week's Shabbat was Parsha Bot, my daughter's bat mitzvah portion, which continued the plagues, especially the shiva of darkness that was placed upon the land. The Torah in both states, Moses held out his hand toward the heavens and thick darkness descended upon all the land of Egypt. This is the only plague that Moses brings on by hand. As we heard last time, Moses had to have the help of his brother Aaron. He spoke for him. Moses was worried about his stuttering. Would Pharaoh take him seriously when he brought the message of God to let my people go, to let us go? But here he uses his hand. He doesn't use his staff. In the last parsha uh, that we had the last time we were together two weeks ago, he was using his staff and the magicians and the sorcerers, they were trying to match everything he was able to do with the staff. So this was very important. She had to touch this darkness, this thick, heavy darkness. It was so thick, you could feel it. She had to touch it before the Egyptians could feel it. It was a plague that had to be felt. There are times in our lives when we are all wrapped in a thick, heavy cloak of darkness dread, death, and despair. Who has experienced this? Who has not experienced it? This is a part of humanity. This is a part of life. And the Jewish religion knows this, honors this, respects this, and remembers this. We are a people of remembering. Last week had with an International Holocaust Remembrance Day. You might have been wondering, why are they keep talking about, the you know, the, the, why are we having the Holocaust Remembrance Day and it's last week and not, you know, when we actually have it right around Passover. But it was International Holocaust Remembrance Day that honors and remembers the liberation of Auschwitz. How many of you were with us in Israel when we went there? How many have been there without us? It's a very important thing to do. There's a group that wants to go to Israel again. Many of us are not going to Africa. It was put off three times, so if you want to go to Israel, let me know, because we have a group of people that want to go. Speaking of which, also in the past week, there has been much unrest in Israel, juxtaposed with this International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And if you think of the synergy in the universe and the energy of life, there's also been so much unrest here with gun violence, death, despair across the entire country, not just in California. There has been more, it's reported, there has been more gunshot violence, gunshot violent deaths reported than days in this calendar year. And there's been even more loss within families and communities. And in Israel, with violence on both sides of the equation, this violence brings loss to everyone, everyone who mourns their families. We may hear how some on one side might celebrate, but in the end, everyone loses. And this is something that we need to recognize and remember if we're ever going to have a prayer of doing something about it. I always say the Torah tracks, which is why every Shabbat I base my sermons on the Torah and make them valid and real to our lives, real to this time that we're living. If you want the letter of the law back in the day and you want to understand that, you take Torah study with Mark Tannen on the first and third Saturday after a service, but not tomorrow because we have the big Norwex thing happening. But this Torah, we roll it every year and we rewind it because every year we are different and it is a living document. So what we bring to it is how we interpret it. And this has been done for almost 6,000 years. 
So it's important that we look at the Torah and we think about what has gone on in these weeks, in the last few weeks of its partial, that we remember the plagues, that we remember the darkness and know that this is still happening even today and the hardening of hearts. Has anyone experienced their own heart hardened? Do you know somebody else who hardened their heart and you were hoping that they would open it up, especially at the time of High Holy Days? The hardening of hearts and the most important thing, the letting go. That must happen for rebirth, renewal, and redemption to occur. So this is a theme in Judaism. It's not an accident. What did Moses have to say over and over again? Let my people go. But everyone has to let go. Pharaoh has to let go. The Egyptians have, the Egyptians have to let go. But the people have to let go too. They don't know what they're going to. They have to have faith in the completely unseen, unknown God, which is why the miracles were so important. But everyone has to let go of something in order to have the rebirth the renewal, and the redemption, and in order to become free and to go forward toward destiny. There is always a darkness, but just as day follows night, even in the creation of our world, everything that we know, everything that we experience, everything is within that. There is incredible darkness at times. At times, we're thickly cloaked in this heavy, palpable darkness that we can actually touch. But then it, at some point, it makes way. It moves over. Why? To make room for the light. We all have light within us. We can bring on that light if we challenge ourselves to move through that thick, heavy cloak of darkness. And then the light of day can be found in our significant living. Why is it significant? If you never experienced pain or darkness, you would not be able to embrace the light with the gusto. You would never know true, unabashed joy. Everything was just hunky-dory forever. So we have to go through these times of despair to learn, to grow, to challenge ourselves, and to love. Because to truly love is to understand that sometimes there is loss and we have to let go, even if we're not willing to do it, even if the person who has to let go doesn't want to do it. At some point, we have to let go. Let go, let God. And in doing that, there's a peace that comes with knowing that we're all sort of floating in this intangible sort of wave, this embryonic state of life, life and death. Darkness and despair, but yes, joy, jubilant joy. We are a people of remembrance in order to ensure that our endurance, our endurance so that these stories in the Torah can be retold and so that we can embrace and experience the light that is capable, that will be even when we're amidst the darkness, incandescent for all eternity, because we had faith, because we moved forward without fear, because we embraced the darkness and we were willing to sing that song, which is Bishalach, our parsha today, that song of humanity, what it means to be human and to feel. Angels didn't get to feel emotions, they were jealous of us. And when you can feel, you want to embrace and feel everything, even sometimes when we're like, I can't take anymore, take it away, I can't do anymore. Following all of the disaster and the plagues and Pharaoh's undoing is what I just said, our Parsha B'Shoach. It is our song at the sea. Our Mecha Mocha prayer, everyone got up and danced around. It is contained within it. As I said, we sing it at every single service. Why? To remember, to dance, and to celebrate our victory of redemption, God's good grace, and the fortitude of our people, the strength that each and every one of us has within us in our DNA. One lone person had faith. They went forward into the sea, which parted. And then as the story goes, Miriam took her timbrel. All the women followed her. And so too, eventually, the men and the children towards a fate that was uncertain. But they wanted to let go, let God, and have something better. Something better than 400 years of slavery. Our song at the sea. 
In our Torah, we are dominated by stories of men, but yes, there are women too, because ultimately why we are all in this yod by yod, hand in hand together. We all have darkness, we all have loss at times, and we all, at one point or another in time, have a need to let go. But with that very act comes redemption for everyone on both sides of the equation. We are a people commanded to ask for and grant forgiveness. We are a people who know what it means to experience a hardened heart and what it takes to circumcise it and be set free. Sometimes it takes a miracle, but you know, we have the ability to create that because we are co-partners with God in creation. We know what it means to bear the burden of loss and the command to live once the morning time has passed so that all can be set free. Beshalach, our song at the sea, our Michamocha prayer is a reminder that yes, there will be darkness and yes too, there will be light just as day follows night. There will be horrific violence. There will be hearts ripped and torn apart. But in time, there will be healing and ultimately love and light. It is up to us to remember that. So when the darkness enfolds us, if necessary, we will remind one another as we cling together in the bleakness of a seemingly never ending night. It is important to cling to one another. Remember and recount the darkness of past sins as we contemplate the sins of today in an effort to ward them off from the future. It is important to hopefully choose to let go, to open up our hearts, to accept what is and what isn't. And yes, at times, to celebrate knowing that dark days are going to be following for sure, but so too will the light. It is up to us to choose to go forward with faith and not fear. It is up to us to sing and to celebrate that we are here. We are still in the game for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for those yet to come. May it always be so. May God be with us on this journey of song, of light, of renewal, rebirth, and redemption. Shabbat Shalom.